Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Dare Biosciences stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Cerulean was a cancer drug company from 2005 until July 2017, then it merged with Dare. The new entity was named Dare Bioscience and the ticker was changed to D-A-R-E. When this merger occurred, the new entity did a 1 for 10 reverse stock split. Cerulean initially IPO'd in 2014 for $7 per share, but it struggled ever since going public. Its kidney cancer drug failed a phase 2 trial, which was a second failed trial. The first failed trial occurred before the company went public. Without this merger, Cerulean would have eventually dissolved its entire business. The new entity focuses on the development of products in women's health, primarily contraception, fertility, also vaginal and sexual health. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has donated money to the company, so it can advance its technology for its contraceptive device. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation mainly works with third world countries. Their goal is to give people access to contraceptives at a reasonable price. It looks like this drug may get approved by 2023, if all goes right. The big drug company Bayer signed an exclusive licensing agreement for this product. If things go as planned, Dare will receive $310 million in milestone payments plus royalties. That is huge because Dare's market cap is less than that, it's $135 million currently. Its bacterial vaginal product has completed phase 3 and may receive FDA approval soon. Its hormone therapy product is in phase 1. Its Soldenafil cream is in phase 2. Soldenafil is commonly referred to men for erectile dysfunction. This company's cream is for FSAD, which stands for Female Sexual Arousal Disorder. It will be the first product to treat FSAD. FSAD can occur in women of any age, but it is more common as women get older and even more prevalent for premenopausal women. The company has a very experienced staff. Many of them have worked on drugs from the pre-clinical stage all the way through FDA approval. The team has worked at companies such as Biogen, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Abbott Labs, and many more. The company is headquartered in San Diego, California and was founded in 2005. It started trading in 2017 as Dare and can be found on the NASDAQ and Deutsche Börse. Let's get started with the model. This is a micro cap company, 125 million market cap. They're trading at 177 a share, and they have 71 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future, and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video, and free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they do have negative free cash flow and negative net income since they're pre-revenue at this point. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue of the sales, and that's zero each year. Below that is their operating expenses. They have seven million of SG&A. This is mainly payroll and marketing. Most of their expenses are in R&D. These are the costs to develop the drugs and all the clinical trial costs. So they have negative operating income every single year and negative net income. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. And they don't have too much in CapEx because most of their costs go into R&D. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. They have negative free cash flow every year, so they fund their business mainly with stock. They issued 10 million in 2018, 5 million in 2019, then 23 million and 38 million. Every time a company issues stock, it dilutes the current shareholders but they need to keep issuing stock to fund their day-to-day -day operations. They don't use much debt to fund their business, mainly capital stock. As long as they keep moving drugs forward in the process, going through phases and getting approvals, then investors will continue putting money into the company. If the drugs they're developing fail to pass a phase, the company will likely go bankrupt. This is the equity section of their balance sheet. They have 8 million of equity. They raised 96 million from issuing stock and they lost $88 million from running their business. If the negative dollar amount in retained earnings is getting close to the positive in additional paid in capital, that's a sign that the company may go bankrupt soon. But I won't worry too much. They'll be able to raise more capital and increase the additional paid in capital number because the company is moving through the drug approval process pretty well at this point. 
Let's look at the capital structure, $8 million of equity, half a million dollars of debt. So they're 94% equity, 6% debt. Their weighted average cost of capital, which is a blend of the cost of equity and cost of debt, is 9.65%. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $444 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $236 million. We divide that by 71 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 334. They're trading at 177, so they're trading at a 47% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. So Bayer said it would pay the company $20 million when Dare passes the clinical trial for its contraceptive drug. And Dare mentioned in their presentation, Bayer may pay up to $310 million in milestone payments plus royalties. So I gave the company $20 million of revenue in 2023 from Bayer and a $310 million milestone payment. And the company will develop other drugs, so they're likely to get revenue from other drugs. But I just did this one drug. And just with the payments from this one drug, the stock is pretty undervalued. Three analysts priced this stock and the average price target was 633. Three other analysts rated the stock a buy and their average price target was 717. So pretty much everybody's saying the stock is undervalued. This is where the stock has been trading since it IPO'd as Cerulean. The stock never hit $100 a share. They did a 1 for 10 reverse stock split when they changed the name to Dare. So you have to divide all these numbers by 10. So it's trading at its peak around $10. When the company merged with Dare in November 2017, the stock was trading at 50 cents. A stock needs to trade above $1 so it does not get delisted on the NASDAQ. That's why they did the 1 for 10 reverse stock split to bring the stock price to $5. So as you can see, it's below $5. So the stock isn't doing that well, even under Dare. This is where the stock has been trading the past 52 weeks. So the stock is up from 52 weeks ago. And look at this big price movement. That occurred on January 13th. It went up so much based on the news story of Bayer licensing their product. It looks like it opened at about $1.50 and it went way up to $4. In dollar terms, it's not much, $2.50, but in percentage terms, it's huge. And when these big news stories comes out, the stock gets really inflated, and then there's a huge sell-off, and the stock price comes way down. But it looks like the stock has settled about 20 or 30% above its pre-January 13th price. Their bait is 1.52, so the stock moves about one and a half times the market. It's up 72% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P is up 35%. The stock got down to a little below $1 and it peaked at close to $4. And the stock is trading above its 50-day and 200-day moving average. This is a really popular stock. Nearly 10 million shares are traded on average each day the last three months. Of the 71 million shares outstanding, 69 million are on float. Before they did the 1 for 10 reverse stock split, they had over 700 million shares outstanding. When a company does a reverse stock split, it decreases the shares outstanding. So if you own 10 shares at 50 cents each before the split, after the split, you'd own one share at $5. Sometimes if a company wants to go private, they'll do a reverse stock split because operationally it's easier to go private with less shares outstanding. Only 5% of the shares are held by institutions and about 7% of the shares are shorted. That's a pretty high short percentage for such a low stock price. Analysts are really bullish on this stock, projecting their earnings to grow 58%, their revenue to grow 73%. But even a 73% growth on their revenue is still zero. You could grow by 1,000% of zero, it's still zero. Obviously, they need to get some positive revenue soon. If you put $10,000 into this company when it was Cerulean, you'd be at $2,600 today. But if you're one of the few people who did that and is still holding on, just keep holding out. This stock may 10x. The biggest shareholder is Vanguard at 2.75%. The CEO of the company owns 1.4% of the stock. Then the CFO owns 0.6%. Then Polaris and Geode. Let's look at their financial ratios. We can't look at the PE. They have negative net income. We can't look at the price of sales since they have no revenue. And their price to book isn't so great at 16.1. They have a good current ratio and a good quick ratio. They have 9 million of cash on their balance sheet and 3 million of receivables. They had negative 35 million of free cash flow in the trailing 12 months and only 8 million working capital. So it's likely they're going to need to raise more capital, dilute more shareholders. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 17 companies in the same industry as Dare. 
We can't look at theirs, PE or price to sales. They are better than average in price to book. They're worse than average in current ratio, but it is above one. They have a terrible ROE. They're low in debt and they're a really small company. Even if they grow eight times, they'd still be at 1 billion market cap, which is still really small. So you can see the average company in this industry is 17 billion market cap. So you're either a big company or you're not much of a company at all. Because if you're still in the process of trying to get a drug approved, you'll have a pretty small market cap. And if you don't get any drugs approved, you will eventually go away. But once you get at least one drug approved, then you become a pretty big company because you could develop other drugs to complement that drug. And also you could develop newer types of drugs as well. Pharmaceutical companies and mining companies, it's kind of like a light switch. If the light switch is off and the room is dark, nothing's happening. No revenue is coming in. It's just pitch black for years and years and years. Nothing is happening. There is work behind the scenes, but there's no output. There's no light. Once you turn the light on, then all the cash starts flowing in. So it's either all or nothing with these companies. You can't be a moderate sized pharmaceutical. You're either super small, meaning you haven't developed any drugs yet, or massive, you have FDA approved drugs. Even a company like Moderna, the only thing they got approved was the COVID vaccine and their market cap is close to $200 billion now. So you just need that one approved drug to be a big company. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 47% discount, but you have to remember all stocks are risky, but penny stocks are much more riskier, especially a pre-revenue penny stock. So you obviously don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. This stock could 10x, 20x, 50x, but there's a better chance of it going 0x. But with that said, I think they have some really innovative products and they have some really big names back in them. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Bayer, and some other really big companies. They also have a really good team, a really knowledgeable staff that has worked in a lot of different parts of this industry. So this could be a really big company in years to come. I rank their free cash flows, revenue, and ratios 1 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.